All right, so this last example is a sort of classic mathematical paradox known as Gabriel's horn. So the Gabriel is named after, I think, the, the angel Gabriel um, because there's something unearthly about this problem. Um, if you uh, take a look at it, so what the, the issue here is that we're going to consider an unbounded interval, right? So we're going to get an improper integral, right? We just have the sort of standard hyperbola coming down like this, right? We're going to revolve that about the x-axis. And while we're doing this, it's a surface area problem, but we're also going to look at the volume. And here's, here's where this gets interesting, okay? Suppose I wanted to calculate the volume, okay? So we're going to calculate the volume using disks. Well, each disk, right, the area of each disk, your sort of um, dA, if you like, is going to be pi times, well, the radius, which is 1 over x, times dx. So there's the area of our disk, pi r squared. We thicken to get that, uh, that dx. So, so I guess actually, once we thicken, this should, I should not say d area now. Sorry, we've been doing a lot of surface area. Um, that's the infinitesimal volume, right? Because we, we have the area, we thicken by dx, that's our infinitesimal volume. We want to get the total volume. So we integrate, okay? From 1 to infinity, pi over x squared times dx. Okay. Well, that's actually doable, right? That's the, the limit as, um, let's say, call it b maybe, b going to infinity of minus pi, if we take the antiderivative, we get minus pi over x, evaluated from 1 to b. Okay. So we get the limit b going to infinity of pi times, um, so if we count for the minus sign, it's going to look like this, 1 minus 1 over b. b is going to infinity. We get pi, okay? So we, we get a finite volume, relatively small one, right? Um, so we can fill the cone. So you think that's the volume. So you imagine like you're filling it with paint or ink or something, right? Um, you can fill the cone, the, the horn. Um, you can fill it. Well, you can, if you can fill it with paint, then surely you can coat it with paint, right? Well, let's see. What is the surface area? Okay. So for the surface area, our dA, right? We do 2 pi r times ds. As always, ds is the arc length element. And we've got everything in terms of x, so let's do it in terms of x, right? So the radius is going to be f of x, 1 over x, OK? The arc length is going to be 1 over the derivative squared, 1 plus. So the derivative of f of x is minus 1 over x squared squared, okay, dx. Okay, so we can uh, clean this up a little bit, 2 pi, 1 over x, that's just going to be 1 over x to the 4, so we can do x to the 4 plus 1 under the square root, and then all over x to the 4, okay? So let's clean that all up. We have 2 pi, 1 over x. Uh, now that's going to give me an x squared, right? So I guess I have 1 over x cubed. And then I have the square root of x to the 4 plus 1, okay? Now, that is slightly bigger. Then 2 pi 
times 1 over x cubed times the square root of x to the 4, right? Adding 1 makes it a little bit here. Square root of x to the 4, well, that's, that's x squared. Um, slightly bigger than 2 pi over x, right? Okay. Well, now we're in trouble because we know, we know that the integral of 2 pi over x from 1 to infinity, we know that diverges, right? So this is bizarre. You have something which has a finite volume, but it has an infinite surface area. How can that even be possible? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, you won't get into the philosophical discussions here. You'll find plenty, you know, if you're curious, you can find plenty of discussion online. Search for Gabriel's horn. You'll find all sorts of talk pages on this. Um, you can spend all kinds of time trying to wrap your head around it if you've, uh, if you've got nothing better to do.